All right, welcome everyone to another fantastic, what will be a fantastic FTI webinar. Uh, I'm here with uh, the special guests, Vanessa and Emma from Exercise to Experience. We're gonna talk uh, and dive into some key questions in and around the concept of group exercise and also talk about the fascinating new course that they've developed and, and have partnered with the FTI. So we are looking forward to diving into some of the details, no doubt. So welcome, Vanessa and Emma. Hello. <laughs> All Thanks right. for having us. Yeah, it's our pleasure. And we've, we've got quite a few on, uh, on the recording, which is great. So welcome to those who have joined us live. Um, and this is obviously going to be uh, available for, for everyone to listen uh, afterwards. Now, on the topic of uh, exercise to experience, can you talk to us more about the story behind exercise to experience? I, either one of you go. <laughs> um, who's, who's putting their hand up first? You want me to go? Yeah, go, <laughs> Em. This is you. It's a long story. I'll try and keep it brief, but we do like a chat, so we'll see. I'll condense it. So um, Vanessa and I come from similar but different backgrounds. Um, I've come from a performing arts background, Vanessa, a sports science. We met in Melbourne when we were working for a company called Virgin Active, and we very quickly became not only work colleagues but very good friends because we – gel on a lot of topics and our belief and want for the industry. Um, I'll zoom through many years at Virgin Active working together, presenting on stage, creating programs for Virgin Active. But what we really just discovered over the years, one time that we were particularly presenting at Filex is, oh my God, there's no education out there for people that want to excel in freestyle group fitness. Um, not in a modern way. And what I mean by that is there's lots out there potentially for your freestyle aqua instructors, for your Zumba instructors, those styles of products. But what we're seeing in the world of fitness now is a huge acceleration in boutique fitness. And really, there's no pathway for those people um, how to get a spot in those clubs, how to audition, how to program, how to put music together. And so we're like, OK, well, we need to make it then. <laughs> Long story short, we need to make that education. And I really do believe it's our different backgrounds, mm -hmm. our two heads meeting together that really helps form that education because um, you need um, two different parts of your being to create and, and, and deliver excellent group experience. You need really, really solid foundations and knowledge. So when you're programming, do you see results? Are you programming in an efficient and effective way? But you also need this element of performance um, and jazz hands, as we like to call it. And so really, because that's kind of where we both came from, we've just melged our worlds together and created this education that not only creates better, solid foundations for the individual instructor or PT, but also gives them this performance element as well, which means they can deliver group experience in a way that really lands with members. Mm. Anything I think else you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that we also noticed that there's such a segregation <laughs> in the industry between group exercise and PT. And, you know, part of my experience that I've brought into the course is that I've always been able to do both. And I have uh, benefited off having both under my tool belt. And the rise of boutique fitness means that you're seeing a lot more personal trainers move into semi-private small groups or big groups because it's more of a cost-effective way of you know, putting more people in front of you, doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. You only see one person at a time and it's time-consuming, but you put four, five, six, ten people in front of you, then you have a lot more scope uh, and you can change your, your cost. You can earn more money. And it's those people specifically who we know are really great at their craft. They have the science, they have the personal training and knowledge, but they don't necessarily understand what it takes to bring that into a group. And then we come from the group exercise background where we're taught Zumba or you're taught Pilates or you're taught yoga and you're only taught how to teach that. You're not actually given a way just to be able to put together a class that you want to create for yourself based off all of the knowledge that you have. And that's what this course allows you to do. It allows you to cherry pick that information. Oh, it's my small group PT. Oh, I'm going to bring it from my yoga. Oh, I've got HIT over here and I've got Pilates over here. And I'm going to put this all together in my melting pot and deliver it in a way that is effective for everyone who's in front of me. 
life changing potentially because I'm able to really motivate them and get to their emotion. I'm going to have amazing music that makes them really, really want to come back again and again. And they're going to get results because I know how to program for the group. And those are the really key elements that we know make this exercise an experience rather than just a class. Brilliant. Can you talk more on the experience element? Because I, I feel that this is the connectivity, yeah, that, that takes place and, and takes shape between the coach and their clients. Mm. And, then, and then it fosters this unique culture. So can you talk about the importance of experience within the context of semi-private, boutiques, which you've alluded to already? Go, Em. This is yeah, go. I think <laughs> I think it's a need for it because of where we're at in the world that we live in right now. We're ever so connected to our mobile phones, our emails, our partners that need us, our sick dog, our you know ever ending list of things to do. We're very connected to that all of the time and therefore stress levels are an all time high as well. We've never been so connected. You know, soon I'm thinking there's gonna be chips in the brain which means we're even more connected. But right now where we're at, we've never been so connected. Um, and that, that impiles a lot of stress on our system. And so there is a need for a space to be able to go to, whether that's your small group PT, whether that's your group fitness studio, whatever that is, um, to be able to disconnect from all of that, even if it's for 45 minutes, an hour, and actually just have some time to reconnect to yourself. You know, um, I like to, you know, refer as disconnect to reconnect. Um, and it really is this idea of being able to let go of all the stress of your day, let go of your kids at home, let go of your boss that's on your back and actually just spend 45 minutes with yourself for you um, and I think there's a whole heap of people in the world that's really good at meditation or already really good at self-care and they can allot that time for themselves but then I'd say that there was the majority that have no idea how to do that or even know how much they need it right yeah and so what we're gifting them through group experience or exercise experience is this time for themselves um, in a way that aligns with them because again, not everybody aligns with 45 minutes of sitting still in lotus position, oming and, and finding that a, a beautiful space to meditate. That's really challenging for people, especially if they're highly stressed. So can we create environments that feel um, easier to step into because it feels more familiar, such as a group fitness class, such as a PT session, um, but be able to create an atmosphere that enables them to disconnect and reconnect for 45 minutes. Um, it's really, really needed. And what they're getting from that is this 45 minutes of decompression. It's 45 minutes of presence where they're not anxious about the future or ruminating about the past. Um, and they're gifted this moment of complete presence for 45 minutes where they get to just decompress and be with themselves. And that's like a huge gift. Um, and we can't just do that through old means of te teaching. We can't just do that and start bright white lighting that feels like hospital lighting that they've been in all day in their office anyway. We can't do that through rubbish sound systems and average playlists and, you know, no microphones. And we can't do that through um, just old style teaching. It doesn't work to create an atmosphere where they disconnect. It has to be really immersive and we talk to that a lot in our education, which is how do we create the most immersive atmosphere possible to be able to give them this bubble of disconnection? Uh -huh. And so we have to be able to do things like create powerful playlists and incredible music scenes that take them on a journey. We need to be able to tantalize their senses through scent and sound and taste and touch and um, to be able to disconnect them from everything. And so that's an art. Um, and that's some of the art of what we teach you on our course. Yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm and I just want to add, sorry, if I just, I just want to throw in there as well. Like there's also, I don't like calling it competition, but the the where, where this growth stems from, why people are searching for this is particularly over COVID. You have a look at companies like Peloton and Technogym and Apple Fitness. The quality of their product and instruction on those platforms is second to none. They employ those instructors full-time. They have teams of people working around them, programming for them, you know, getting the right lighting, getting the music all done. And, and they're sometimes even coached with what to say. Like they literally have coaches and people have experienced that. They have access to that. And they might not want to access that all the time. But when you give yourself that level of, quality of instruction and 
class immersion on that online level, if you're coming in and you want that physical connection, you want people connection, but the instructor just is falling flat. They're, they're falling over their cues. They, they stumble. They're not motivating. Maybe they're just yelling at you for 45 minutes. That level of experience puts you off. You're, you're not mm. going to go back to those studios because it's easier and more cost effective to do it from your lounge room or not do it at all because yeah. they've been exposed to this high level quality instructing that has driven up the standard across all group exercise. But at the moment, there's not, there's nothing, there's no education for the people currently in the industry face to face to know how to deliver that standard. And that's yeah. where we want to broach that gap because it, it's a, it's a big gap, you know, especially when they have all that help and those teams, et cetera. Well, we want to give you some of that help. That's what we're here for. Yeah, ex, ex, like expectation has risen exponentially, but yeah. there hasn't been anybody to help rise the talent or lift the skill set. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. What's emerged in this conversation is that the environment plays a, a powerful part and that environment is cultivated by that coach who's who's fully present, yeah? And so in this attention-grabbing culture um, where you know, it's a, it's a finite resource. Yeah. So the, the, the attention is a, is a, is a limited capacity resource. Now the artfulness of a, of a coach is to cultivate that environment. So if we think of it triangular, we've got the, the, the coach, the environment, then, then triangulating down below, we have um, the skill level or, or so t- talk to us a little bit more about we're switching from the art form to the technical components that you teach in the, uh, in the program. That's smart. That's that's pretty much it because there is that balance between being a cheerleader and just kind of wooing all class and actually having the fundamental skills to not only like the programming side of it, which obviously I, that's kind of my bread and butter. That's where I'm really passionate about. I'm going to put that aside just for a second. But let's just talk about queuing and coaching. Now, We have all, if you're an instructor, you've been in a room where maybe you've said the same thing 20 different ways. There's that one person in the room who still doesn't get it. However, if you're still saying that same cue and you haven't changed anything and you're still expecting that person at the back to do something different, but you're not changing anything, then you've created an unsafe experience for that person. If you single them out to try to help them, you potentially created an unsafe experience for them biologically because they might not want to be singled out. And if you don't address them at all, maybe they're being unsafe because now their technique is flawed. So the art of coaching or instructing is being able to use your language, your body presence, the music, the the way that you do things, the way that you even demonstrate to be able to make it accessible for everybody who's in front of you and everyone speaks a different language and I'm not talking about like English Italian Spanish I'm talking about kinesthetic cues talking about visual cues auditory cues combinations of the above if you don't know how to manipulate those types of cues yourself you're missing a whole bunch of people they're not they're not listening to you they're not understanding and then what Emma said is that they're zoning out Oh, I've got to go get the milk. Oh, I've got to, I've got to go do this. Oh, husband said blah, 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 right in the middle of your class when instead they should be there and you're saying, can you feel blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, yeah, I can feel the thing. Like I feel that. And that's what I want to be feeling. And they want to be, not only do you want that technical element, then you want that connection with the instructor. You know, if I look directly down the camera, looks like I'm talking right at you. But if I stare down here, then the message that I'm imparting, it's not as purposeful. It doesn't feel right. And so if you don't know how to manipulate that within a group setting, you're falling short. Em? Mm. So I'm hearing the... Sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm hearing that the body language is just as as important as the the verbal cueing. Is that that correct to to say that? The way that I we think it's, it's, body language is important in relation to the way that we learn. So, you know, if we if we look at the VARC model, yeah, visual, auditory, let's say read, 
um, and and kinesthetic, that's what you're getting at here, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's speaking all the languages. Like, you know, Vanessa said, it's, we're not talking about Spanish, Italian, Greek, but imagine that people in your class all were speaking only those languages. Imagine none of them spoke English and you were trying to communicate with all of them where you'd need to be able to speak in all of those languages, at least somewhat verbally, if not visually for them to understand, right? So it's like, how do I communicate with my members most efficiently? And if you don't speak all languages, if you're only speaking one language, your language, then you're really limiting yourself because only the people that speak your language are going to understand you. Um, and so I always like, this is a bit off tangent, but I like the way that um, people resonate with it because a lot of people know the love languages. Yeah, the five love languages. Most people have read the book or done the test. And it's like that, you know, if, if you're in a partnership with someone that doesn't speak your love language, then you're going to fall short because you're trying to love each other in your own personal ways and not in each other's ways. And therefore arguments happen, you end up breaking up, blah, 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 right? So it's the same as that. If we're not speaking the language of all of our participants so that they can all connect with us in their own individual ways, then we fall short in creating connection with them. And if we can't connect with them, then they're not going to have a deeper sense of purpose and and emotion in that class, in which case they're not going to get the experience that we're trying to create. So -hmm. you can put all of the effort into your music playlist. You can put all of the effort into really deep programming. And I think this is what Vanessa was alluding to. That's why she left that to the side for now. You can be the most brilliant programmer. And we see that with a lot of PTs that come through our education, right? Which is that they can be incredible PTs. They can create the most in-depth, periodized programs that would blow the socks of anyone. But if they're not communicating that program effectively, then it means F all, you know, excuse my non-French, but you know, like it, they're not gonna, they're not gonna hear it. And so you have to come back to those fundamentals first. You have to learn to be able to speak the language of your participants in all the ways that you just said, Tarek. So verbal communication, but then verbal communication in lots of different ways. You know, it's not just a case of, am I speaking words? You have to learn to speak words in lots of different ways so that different people can understand them. And then yes, your visual communication are your visual demonstrations of the way you're presenting yourself and holding yourself on stage effective. And then from there, your kinesthetic cues as well. So once you've got all of that as a package, then you're able to effectively bring across your other skills and talents, such as your programming, your music, et cetera. You, you talked to, we'll get to you in a moment, Sammy. You talked earlier, um, Emma, about the importance of getting being present, you know. So the idea is, and perhaps Vanessa discussed this too, is you've got this attention-grabbing um, culture. So they're coming into the space, you know, this, this safe space. What are some maybe anchoring strategies and pre-framing that you guys suggest to kind of help cultivate this, um, this greater level of awareness and coupling between the environment, the coach, and what they're doing in the class? I think, first of all, I just want to point out why that's so important, because, you know, mental health is at an all time low. This is a subject hugely passionate about mental health is at an all time low. And we know that often if we think about the two elements of poor mental health, there's depression and anxiety. Um, Anxiety is typically being worried all up in the brain about something from in the future. And depression is often around ruminating from the past. Right. We're just going to be very lame and simple terms, of course. Um, to be present is to let go of those two things. And so we can really have a positive effect on people's mental health through giving them presence because they're less likely to be in the past or the future. If we're present, we kind of adjust in the present. We're in the moment. We're in that moment only. And so therefore it's harder for us to be worried or anxious um, about something that hasn't happened or is yet to happen um, or has. And so, yes, we use the tools such as immersion, such as um epic verbal cueing, such as um, creating the right atmosphere, such as playlists, all of these little tools need to all fall into place as a big mesh to create what we call exercise experience. And when we do that, we're able to give this gift of presence to our, our members. So it's not a case, I guess, of saying, do this one simple thing, and you're going to be able to give them this idea of presence. It is a huge combination of lots of little things that come together in this very magical way to provide this idea of um, of complete immersion, a complete presence from your members. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's a ton of science behind it, and I would love to go more into that today. But, you know, the use of music, the use of moving in unison, the use of um 
carefully curated words in the right space along with that music, all of these things in conjunction actually help release different hormones and neurotransmitters within the body. We get a rush of endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, sometimes even prolactin, which you may or may not know. These are the hormones that deliver us things like trust, love, bonding, um, just that natural high, if you will. It's like you can go to a party and not take drugs and have the same effect, you know? Um, And so all of these in combination as well imagine giving somebody this natural high they're also less likely to feel um with poor mental health and instead be happier more present humans which is pretty powerful yeah to add a, a lot of people step into group exercise is the first thing they do in the fitness industry right because they can hide in the back and you know they're, they're not they're not they're not pointed out And for those people who are new, for those people who exercise is a barrier to, they have a really strong need for safety. Now, they don't walk into the gym and go, I need to be safe because it's subconscious and it's deep-seated biological, okay? Mm -hmm. But everyone walks into the gym, everyone walks into their space with their need to be safe. And what Emma's alluding to is by creating the atmosphere, by, by using the right words, you can either create this feeling of safety or you can create this jarring, unsafe ugh, experience for someone and that experience might lead them to never come back or it might lead them to not exercise again for another five years because they had just that, oh, the instructor was just, they, were, they, were, they really pushed me and I wasn't ready for that and it was really, like, it was really frightening and I don't think instructors do this intentionally. Like I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Instructors do this job because they love it. And we almost kill people with kindness. Like we kill them with enthusiasm because we're so excited to get them doing the things that we want them to do that we forget that they're not like us. And we forget that they have different needs to us. And the science behind allowing people to feel safe is so massive. And it's, dropped through all of those modules and this is where group exercise has missed a lot of a a lot of the mark on that particularly in the past because people aren't feeling safe they aren't feeling recognized they aren't feeling connected they're not feeling noticed so they look for it elsewhere but we can provide that group exercise is transformational yeah yeah and and, uh, one one uh, reference is Brene Brown uh also Carol Dweck Barbara Friedrichson as well. So there's some some research if you guys wanted to go out there. But this is this is fascinating, and it it, it really talks to the importance of um, of culture again and getting that mixture right. So you've so thus far we've talked about the importance of these pillars, which will tie into the overall arching program, and and of course philosophies are so important to that. So we've got coaching, we've got cueing. Can you can can both of you talk more on the music? Why why that's important? Because you've touched on that several times. But as as a let's call it a third pillar now in our discussion, why is music so important? Oh, it's everything. If I'm honest, this is my this is my jam. Music has the power to change your life, and I think we all know that. Music tells us how to feel, how to think, um, and I don't think we realize how much power music has over our lives because it's always in it. You know, we've been listening to music ever since we were probably a baby in the womb. Our parent, our mum would have been listening to music. We'd have heard it subconsciously, you know, in, in the womb. We've been listening to music ever since we can remember. And it's such an integral part of all of our lives that we don't realise the powerful powerful effect it has on us. Um, music literally tells you how to feel. Think of a movie that you've watched and imagine that movie without a soundtrack. It would be the most bizarre movie you've ever watched because without realizing it, and it's actually quite strange, we watch a movie and there's an entire score swiped over the whole thing. You know, you're watching a romantic scene and the music does something and it makes you feel more loving and more emotional and you cry and you think it's so beautiful. Now, if that scene was played without music, it would look so different. We can't even imagine it because every movie has it. And we're not even thinking about the fact that we're randomly watching people with a musical score over the top of it. It's quite odd if you think about it. We don't go through life with a musical score over the top of every scene that we're in. You but the do, music Emma. is the same. It feels in my life, it is. Yeah, um, I play it all the time. Just in any any moment, Kyle goes to do 
band because yeah. I play music now. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you've, well, you've alluded to the why, but how is that important in the scheme of the program and, and how that's sort of delivered sort of almost unstructurally, right? But there there is some format to to how music oh, ought to be delivered. Yes. Yeah. So can you yeah, touch so on that? Things, um, such as BPM. BPM is a huge importance when it comes to structuring music for classes because there is a... Um, there's a blueprint, there's a skeleton to all music and there's a pattern in all music that a lot of people don't even realize is there. And, and at that point in our course, it always kind of blows people's mind when we show them this blueprint. Okay, this is actually the bare skeletons of what all music looks like. And when I say all, I say that you loosely, because obviously things like jazz music or slight indie style music will be different, but your standard popular music all is based around this blueprint and it's repeatable and it's predictable. And if it's if music doesn't follow that blueprint, it feels jarring in our body because we're so used to hearing it in that way. And so what's cool is we know that that blueprint is there because we've always heard it. But on the flip side of that, we don't consciously know it's there. So we have to learn it. And once we learn the blueprint of music, once we learn the skeleton, the structure, we can manipulate it. And we manipulate that through things like manipulating the BPMs, so the beats per minute in the music. Um, we manipulate it by looking at the different instruments in the music, how much vocals there are, all of these things, so that when we put a playlist together, we can actually create a journey. And if we imagine that journey, like the soundtrack, the score to your 45-minute class, we're able to manipulate how people feel during that class. Yeah, so we can actually take them on a journey. Imagine it, your 45-minute class is a movie. We're telling them how to feel in any given moment. So maybe we're starting off in a warm up and the music's telling us, OK, we should feel present. We should feel calm. We should feel relaxed. We should be starting to get into our bodies. Maybe then as we start to heat things up, the music intensity changes, the BPM changes with it. Maybe at our absolute pinnacle parts of our class, we have a use of the drops in the music and the crescendos and maybe the lyrics are telling us how to feel. So you imagine this musical 45 minute journey as the score to your class um, and you can actually evoke emotion in people using that that playlist which is incredible if you think about it and used right you can have people having absolute breakthroughs in your class I've had people cry laugh in hysterics one moment in tears the next because they're getting to feel things and as we've already alluded to we're so disconnected from our body day to day this might be 45 minutes where you're giving the gift of somebody to actually feel what they feel like today you know often we just block that down switch it off you know push that away I don't want to feel my feelings I don't want to be embodied I don't want to know how my foot feels or my arm feels we're actually gifting them this 45 minutes where they actually get to connect to that and the music absolutely is a fundamental part of that journey so good so good um so I, I gather that there's a blueprint for your cueing and coaching element that's taught so there's, there's blueprints there and the idea is that you, you want to provide them with a foundation, these coaches that are going to be doing group classes in these different contexts. So we talked about semi-private, we talked about classical team training, boot camp. So it, it really cuts across all of those under that, you know, you've got group fitness, but then you've got these subcategories. So the, the whole idea is that exercise to experience cuts through and talks directly into those other categories. Um, We've covered those three pillars to this point. Now, everyone uh, who's here, if you've got questions, we're going to dive into those. So please pop them in the chat. Um, be a bit courageous because there are, I'm sure some of you from this conversation, you know, ideas are stimulated. So please pop it in. We'll allow you guys a few minutes, uh, guys and girls, to, to, to chat about anything related to what we've been discussing. We sort of covered these three pillars. Now, I'd like to switch to the fourth one being programming now. So we've, we've talked about really the artfulness environment, all of these fascinating um, areas that that I, I agree with, like coaches, trainers need to embody this. Yeah. Now talk to us about uh, the fourth pillar, um, not only why it's important, but how it's delivered in exercise to experience. Yes. So if you noticed, the, the last two pillars, we split up between Emma and I. That's where the, the, the difference and the, the melding came in um, because I, I come from an exercise science background. Programming is my jam. And not only is programming important for the results side of things, but Emma talked about the musical journey. The way that we link programming in with this immersive element is we don't often think of our classes as a journey. 
we think of our class as a hit class. We think of our class as a strength class, as a, I don't know, whatever, yoga class. But if you were to maintain the same intensity throughout your entire class, you'd either kill everybody or they would just be completely like underdone because they're not, they're not getting any levels. So the levels that Emma was talking about not happen, not only happen emotionally, but they happen physically. And they're so connected because you can't experience an emotion without feeling it in your body. So if you experience happiness, your chest gets bigger, you stand up taller, you get oxytocin, you get dopamine. Things happen physically when you feel an emotion. So you can pair these two paradigms together to to make a bigger journey to make a more immersive journey so you might not come at it from emma's angle you might come at it from my angle which is okay i need to deliver a high intensity interval based class and i say interval because we often miss the interval so how am i going to create amazing intervals in this class and a journey where i want people to have two really big peaks of intensity as we go through this class, they need them to hit that. So the programming side of things looks at what what are you trying to achieve? Like, what is your class doing? <laughs> I don't know if a lot of classes actually have that in mind when they put it together uh, and and know the nitty gritty of what it is they're trying to achieve because that really is the fundamental part of what you're doing. You know, you might have branding for your business. I see a lot of businesses in there and they say that they're accessible, they're for everyone, they're, you know, they're functional. And then you have a look at their programming and their programming isn't even high intensity interval training. It's just high intensity training and it's high impact and it's go, go, go. That's not accessible. That's, that's really just to one demographic and your branding is saying that you're accessible and you're for everyone, but your programming is actually sending a different message completely. So people don't often realize that you, the programming is the only physical thing that people take away from your classes, right? Because they literally feel it, the sweat away with them. So if the programming isn't matching the music, isn't matching the branding, isn't matching your values within your own brand, then it's the experience is jarring. It doesn't make sense. Um, and if your instructors don't know how to deliver the class that you want them to deliver, then this it's the same thing. The message is getting mixed. So your programming is how you want people to feel in your body. It's your brand. It's it's the actual product. <laughs> it's you know we call Emma has a par- like this example where we call it the avocado and toast. And you go to a restaurant to get your avocado and toast. If you don't get your avocado, nothing else is going to work. You know, you might, everything else you can bring here and there. The restaurant might be amazing, but the service might be terrible. Or the avocado and toast tasted really good, but the music was too loud. Can you see how everything, like if you're going out to get a really good avocado and toast, you want absolutely everything. You don't want just the avocado because you could just get that at home. People want programming. There's a million programs on the internet, literally a million. So how how are you making it amazing for the people in front of you and how do you make it match all the other parts of the journey that we just talked about? Wow, I just had to take a bit of a breath there for a, for a moment. Um, very powerful. Um, so let's flip now to, to the overall... Um, reason why exercise to experience stands out um, from potentially what what is on offer. I know that was touched on at the beginning. I want to recap a little bit here. So we've got these four pillars that are essential to exercise to experience, which has been cultivated over many years of both yours and, and Emma's journey. Yeah? So we've got the um, coaching cueing, which are kind of intertwined. We've got the music element, so that's going to help to shift the environment. But there's blueprints to each of these folks, and this is what's important here. It's not some random mishmash. Um, there's there's high-level logic, um, imagination, creativity put into this. Um, 
program. And then we have obviously the programming itself. So just as Vanessa was saying, the, the programming um, isn't black or black or white. Like there are there are programming principles and, and they're universal, whether they're, they're strength for strength uh, or pertaining to those five or six different elements of what we call fitness. But, but programming principles are there. However, we need to adapt that and adopt that to, to each and every client. And certainly in the group, you have this, this dynamic. So whether it's three to three to five clients, typically for semi-private, whether it's a smaller group or whether it's a bigger group, one question I did want to ask Vanessa is how is that managed? So, you know, is, is how is that program adapt, adapted within a group setting? Because I think that's always been the challenge, at least that has been that had been my challenge for for many years. Um, being, being ultra creative is one aspect that I overcame it with, coupled with obviously the science of it itself. But then being able to to kind of help that individual who's totally struggling there. What sort of formats, blueprints, if you will, are in place there, without it being you know one dimensional? Yeah, it's a great question. And look, the system that we follow when we go through all of the modules is you, you, it's like working on a car. You don't know what's wrong until you take it all apart and then you you go back into it. That's kind of what we do is we, we're going to take out every single part of what we do. Like you said, we go through the basics of programming, okay? Let's have a look at that and, and understand what that's like. But then to put it back in a group setting, you have to understand what the group setting is because you alluded to it. Is it three to five? Is it 10 people? Is it 40 people? Because the way you program is going to be different in each of those settings. But then the way that you link your programming back to the music, back to cueing specifically, is really important. I'll just give you like a really quick example. Now, if I told you right now just to go as like run as hard as you can, right? That doesn't like that doesn't really mean anything. It's just a it's just a random cue. But I know that if I got you to do it for X amount of time, I could get your heart rate up. Right. Now, if I use that in reverse and I just get you to start walking on the spot, I'm essentially getting you to do the same thing, but the way that I cue it is going to change the experience of what's happened. So sometimes people program exercises that they have in their mind, but the way that they cue that exercise actually creates a disbalance in what they're trying to achieve. So your your words are so powerful and that's why cueing is our most fundamental part of this is because it completely changes everything else that you're doing within your class. And I've heard it again is instructors love to push people but you don't need to push people every single way through the class. It will fundamentally change your programming. It will get people to burn out or work to higher intensity too quickly or get them to do a progression before a regression. Both of those words, which we don't use in our course at all. So we're trying to change the narrative around how people even look at group exercise, number one, and then once we've broken down all the component parts, use that system, then you can put it all back together again. Fantastic. This is gold. One question I did want to kind of almost finish off before we segue into um, Sammy providing a little bit more um, emphasis on the structures of the program. I wanted to discuss with either of you, like what are, you, what are some instructor expectations of the industry that may need to change I think it's a quite a good global question if you guys wanted to zoom in on that a little bit. I just think for a really long time, say zoom out the past 20 years, um, bar the, you know, the, the previous sort of five, especially in Australia, because we are a little behind in regards to the boutique fitness scene that we alluded to earlier. Majority of people that wanted to gr teach group fitness would go down a pre choreograph route. So, you know, you, you got your cert three, your cert four, you decided that you wanted to go more down the group fitness route and you were most likely, most likely to choose an option such as Les Mills, a brilliant option, right? Because it was my option. It's definitely the first place I went to. I'm, this is definitely not bagging out at all, um, Les Mills. I think they're an incredible company and they really paved the way for group fitness. But what that did is that we created a whole heap of instructors, very talented, very great, 
but without skills in a lot of the fundamental things that you need to be able to do freestyle because Les Mills does it all for you. They do the music, they think about the musical arc, the musical journey, the BPMs, the blueprint. They've got that all down for you and they've got incredible program directors that that know that art, right? So they do it for you. They also create the programming and they think out the programming and they've got sports scientists creating the programming. So literally all that you have to do is pick up the DVD, you learn the program and away you go and they teach you very well in the art of and of communication, but that's all right? And then since then, though, the industry has shifted massively. You've only got to look at what's on every street corner. There's an F45, there's a rhythm cycle studio, there's a boxing studio, there's an everything in between studio. All of these are boutique fitness studios, and that is only going to get bigger. It's only getting bigger. We're only going to expand into that space. Or even if you look at a lot of the health clubs and big boxes now, they're moving away from pre-choreographed programs and they're moving into creating their own programs. So me and Vanessa, for an example, um, came from Virgin Active. They completely have almost moved 100% away from pre-choreographed and have created their own in-house programs in boxing, in cycle, in yoga, in Pilates. And so what that does is it leaves a humongous gap when it comes to finding talent. I know Beck, on this call would absolutely agree with this. Finding talent is extremely hard because there is zilcho education for people that are moving into group fitness now at its current state. Yeah, back then, great. I could be a Les Mills instructor in five programs and make a really good living out of that because I would teach across multiple health clubs. I would teach my body combat, my body pump, my RPM, and I would be um, really, really popular. And I would take people with me and I'd be, you know, I'd become a presenter. I had a pathway, you know, I wanted to become a Les Mills presenter. I wanted to do X, Y, Z. That was the pathway for the group fitness instructor, but it has changed. And I'm not saying that people don't teach Les Mills anymore because they can, and they will, and there's still place for that, but it isn't the majority. The majority is moving towards boutique fitness, health clubs with their own programs, and there is no talent to fit those spots. So then you've got two problems. You've got instructors looking for work that are at a loss because these studios and health clubs are looking for people that know how to program, that know how to put a playlist together. Yeah, so that's number one loss. And then you've also got the loss of the recruiter. Yeah, you've got the loss of the studio owner or the the health club owner or manager because they're looking for talent and they can't find any. And so then they're like, what do I do? Where do I go from here? You know. And so then they have to start developing in-house training and they might not have even the skill set to be able to do that. And so then what we see is just a whole heap of vanilla programming out there that isn't matching those expectations that Vanessa spoke about earlier, where they've been online and they've been to the States online where the talent level is quite high because they've been in this arena quite a long time. Um, they've got a lot of high level freelance instructors out there. So it's different in the States, right? So people experiencing that level of um, group fitness, but they're not being able to get it anywhere in Australia, in parts of Asia, in parts of the world where it doesn't exist, right? So there's lots of problems there. And we honestly believe without tooting our own horn that our education really does um, heal and fix that problem. Because for twofold, we can create the um, we can create the talent now. We can take people on board on this education and wholeheartedly know that once they've been through the education, they will be able to step into that boutique setting. But we also fit you know, and and heal the expectation of the recruiter because either they can take on our education, put everybody through it. They don't have to find a master educator in different programs. We can be that person for them. So um, we definitely believe that our education fixes the huge problem that there is in a lot of markets out there where there isn't talent and there isn't skill set moving forward into the present group fitness scene. Yeah, you've certainly laid the case for it uh, thus far in this webinar. It's uh, <laughs> terrific to uh, really summarise, you know, that that key key question really, because you 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 sort of provided the journey of the early early days, right? And we can even go further back to Jane Fonda and uh, you know what have you. <laughs> even prior to that, right? But look, all, all that's an evolution, and we 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 build on the shoulders of giants. And what you're saying is that essentially um, that. We're getting, it's not about a cookie cutter approach, number one. I think that's what probably everyone's gathered now. I'm the plaintiff's advocate. So to be though a free stylist, the art of coaching is 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 really important. Yeah. So that art coupled with the technical nuances that, that I think I think the, the, these are key takeaways, folks. However, having a blueprint or a foundation, um, I know in a previous webinar, 
Uh, Vanessa, you talked a lot about um, formats of, of classes which are provided, templates. However, that, that still isn't a cookie cutter approach. It's very important to have those fundamentals um, in your toolkit. And that then speaks to the subcategories of group training um, being semi-private or any derivation of small group training. So that's terrific. Now, um, is, did anyone in the group here want to make any comments? Uh, if that be Beck, we're going <laughs> to point to Beck. If, if you've got any uh, comments, suggestions, um, any questions from anyone thus far or curiosities, we'd, we'd love to hear it um, until before we switch over to Sammy. Don't be so silent. <laughs> I'm going to have to pick on people at the moment. Is Beck trying to say something, but we can't hear her? Are you saying something, Beck? <laughs> Speak up, Beck. <laughs> I can't, yeah, we can't hear. Um, is it just me? Yeah, no, no, she's on mute, I think, maybe. Uh, no, no, Beck's not on mute, um, but maybe it's Beck's volume. But we'll come back to Beck. Yeah, um, this has just been so terrific, this. So, I, I mean, I, I'm, I've got goosebumps, honestly. I, I, I do this so often, but I love it. I've just seen, like, passion with purpose. That, 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 that's how I'd really sum up both of you and, and what you've brought to this industry is staggering. And we're very excited uh, about this product and I've known both of you for many years. So to that end, I'm going to get Sammy to just share a little bit more of the particulars of the program to kind of educate you uh, who are in the audience here, who are listening and who will watch this to kind of see the value first um, and then be able to make a decision. So we don't want to be pushing the product like down. We, we don't do it this way. So Sammy, over to you, my friend. You're you're ready to to share um, a little bit more about the Exercise to Experience program. Wow, uh, coming in after those girls, like yeah, that that's uh, they rocked. They did rock. Uh, that was amazing. Everyone, uh, I'm never going to be able to explain this the way the girls did. Okay, they they created this system, this set of systems. Uh, to communicate an experience, okay? Uh, we talked in depth about the queuing, and for me, I got excited. I put my hand up. I was going to rave about it. But communication, that's my jam. That's what, that's what I do. I do communications coaching. And uh, to, to coach to a group is so different than, than dealing with one-on-one. -on -one. How do you deliver all of that knowledge, be it decades of personal experience and and all the all, all the education you got? How do you deliver that uh, to a group? Uh, we we want to we want to create permanent lifestyle change. We want to create an experience that's unforgettable. Uh, the coaching element. Uh, so Coach Tarek says coaching is about connection. So being efficient and, and, and effective in your ability to deliver cues, uh, understand uh, the, the psychology and behavior of the group uh, individually and as a, as a whole uh, and, and be able to change their habits, yeah, to communicate, yeah, harness the coach's eye. I think that's how a coach would put it. Programming. So driving scientific results to small or large groups, uh, understanding the differences between one-on-one, -on -one, small groups and large group training, team training. Uh, uh, again, aligning it with the experience. So the music, the flow, uh, the ups and downs. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that part of the, the way uh, Vanessa was, was discussing her, her specialty, you know, her, her love of programming. Music. So for me, this is Emma, right? So creating unforgettable experiences through music. Um, we know that that music can change our hormones. It can change our moods. Uh, mood and movement, right? Driving mood and movement. I think that's the way they put it. I I love that. I couldn't put it better. But there's a science to it, and you know, I think what the girls were alluding to the whole time. And what Coach Tarek harps on about all the time, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Uh, the girls have put together a set of systems that quickly and simply takes you through how to become an expert at delivering 
an experience. Yeah. So why choose this system? Uh, if you haven't already decided, a couple of the, the girls have already. Um, it's online self-paced. So you're going to go through 12 weeks of learning at your own pace. There's interactive videos. You're going to get a bunch of templates and manuals. You're going to have reference materials for life. All right, you're going to keep learning after the program. So there's live workshops. Learning uh, should be interactive. So you're going to get together with the girls live in, 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 in an interactive Zoom-like setting. There are six live workshops. We're going to turn theory into action. Okay, we're going to build a community of leaders. So again, coming back to leaders and community, uh, Emma, and, Emma and Vanessa are going to lead you all to grow and learn together. So this is communal learning, shared experience for group excellence, right? You, you, you're going to learn how to deliver uh, amazing experiences, but you're going to do, to do it in a community setting, not only building communities uh, for retention, for, for changing people permanently, but also you're going to learn in a community setting. So this is uh, this is my favorite uh, saying of Coach Tariq's. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. You're going to get detailed feedback throughout the assessments and the workshops, but you're going to keep learning long after the program. Uh, you're going to learn from your clients as well. What what feedback do they give you? Are you reading that feedback? Feedback's a two way street. So. Uh, that that's something I really appreciate. That's communication at its best. Uh, that's it, guys. That that's my little presentation done. Uh, look, in terms of how how we're offering the program, the program is is being offered at twenty two fifty Australian US uh, AUD. So uh, AUD twenty two fifty AUD, but we'd really love to make this a bit special. So we're, we're, we, we love adding value as much as we can. So for everyone that joins us on the webinar, we'd like to offer the program at $1,850, so $400 off. And we'd like to offer a business development coaching session. So a 90-minute session focused on business development, uh, where you're going well, where you could improve, uh, and, and some sales and service systems behind that. Uh, how to grow your business. So that, that's something that we're offering to everyone that's joined us on the, the webinar, uh, $400 off and, and a free coaching session to grow your business. What What's your take on that, guys? Is that fair? Do you think that's reasonable? Love it, Beck. Thank you. <laughs> I, think, um, I think we all you get it. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've already had a couple who are quite interested, which is great off the back of this. Um, so anyone else uh, who's present with us now, uh, you could just put in the chat, yes. Otherwise, Sammy will, will be in touch uh, individually to get your thoughts and feedback um, from this presentation. But first and foremost, we, we wanted to certainly deliver um, an experience in this webinar to, to showcase um, really the brains behind uh, the exercise to experience and show you guys the creators, you know, themselves, because oftentimes they're the creators of something maybe behind the scenes, but you're, you're, you're getting the, the, the real people, uh, Vanessa and Emma, who have created this and we're, we're, in, we're, we've empowered it through FTI, which is great. Um, so it is all fully accredited by the way, with, uh, Oz Active in Australia with FitRec, um, and soon to be the American College of Exercise as well. So there's lots of goodies to this, uh, to this program. And we're just excited to be honest, uh, Vanessa and Emma, to, to deliver this um, with you um, and to really shape the industry along with you. Any final thoughts from, from either of you? I just like to add just to re-emphasize on that feedback process because it's something that Vanessa and I are really passionate about, which is that we don't believe that you get to grow and learn if you don't get to implement the skills. And quite often um, I've been on hundreds as is Vanessa, different certifications in our years of teaching. And often the feedback process is tiny. It might be that you teach a minute 
And then you get a little bit of feedback on that. And then you're like, cool, good to go. You can go teach this program now. And it's like, you're left with skills, but no real knowing if you're delivering them correctly or if you're delivering them to the highest standard. And so when we created this course, it was a big, big importance that we created a big feedback process. And so you go through a series of um, miniature teach backs throughout the live sessions. But then as a part of your final assessment, you'll send in a full recording of a full class. So a 45 to 60 minute class. And we'll give you a detailed report on that entire teaching. So basically, as Sammy said, you keep learning after the course, because after you've delivered that final piece of feedback session, we're able to give you a detailed report on where you can go next. Yes, you're now ticking these boxes, but I'd still love you to work on these boxes. Here's how to work on these boxes. Here's where you can take it another step up, you know, all of these things so that the learning doesn't stop and you can continue to grow. And that's really important to me because we never stop learning. I wished I could have this process done for me. Me and Vanessa often give each other feedback because we don't get it from anywhere else. And, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been instructing, how good you believe you are, you are never going to stop growing as an instructor. You can never, there's no ceiling on how great you can become. And so this is why this feedback process is really important to us um, to implement into the course and make sure that everybody gets as much value for money as possible. Yeah, brilliant. It's been sensational. I know we've gone a little bit over and thank you for those who have stayed the course. So thank you again, uh, Vanessa and Emma, for your wonderful energy and wisdom in all of this. And we look forward to the uh, launch, which will be after, or which will be Easter, won't it? So we're not too far off, folks. So the, the live delivery will happen certainly the week after Easter. But um, that's this is what's installed. So it's going to be over three months of total immersion. And we feel that learning it in this fashion will help you to absorb it, to learn it, to transfer it, and ultimately embody it at the same time. So we're, we're, we're thoroughly excited and thankful, um, really grateful for, for both of you, and grateful for those who have stayed on this, um, this, this webinar. So thank you to everyone. We will be in touch individually. Uh, Sammy and Seb as well will be uh, just touching base with, with all of you to see how you're going and, and uh, your thoughts and feedback on it all. So have a wonderful day uh, wherever you are around the world and a wonderful weekend uh, to come. Thanks again, Emma and Vanessa. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Bye, you guys. Bye.